Good morning, everybody. Good to be with you. It is Tuesday, March the 15th, 2022. The month of March is almost halfway over. Hard to believe, isn't it? I'm Pastor Jody Van Sickle from Campton United Methodist Church. It's a cloudy day outside and uh, hoping that the sun uh, peaks out later on today. But it's good to be with you this morning, and I'm so thankful for you today and thankful that you tuned in to our daily devotional time. Let's have a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you so much, Lord, again, for your presence. Father, it's just such a wonderful thing to to realize that the God who created us, the God who created all that is, the all-powerful, all-knowing, all-seeing Oh, wonderful God is with us today that he has reconciled us through Christ Jesus, his son, and has poured out his Holy Spirit upon us. Father, I thank you for each one that's tuning in. And I just ask your blessings upon them, Lord God. And Father, we continue to pray for those that are sick and those that are suffering. We continue to pray for those that are lost and those that are grieving today, dear God. And we pray for peace. We pray for peace in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. I want to do a, a second um, devotion this morning. Yesterday we started on the, the Holy Spirit, and I want to talk today about quenching the Holy Spirit. And I want to read to you this morning from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 12 through 22, and this is from the New Living Translation. 1 Thessalonians 5, beginning with verse 12. Dear brothers and sisters, Honor those who are your leaders in the Lord's work. They work hard among you and give you spiritual guidance. Show them great respect and wholehearted love because of their work and live peacefully with one another. Brothers and sisters, we urge you to warn those who are lazy, encourage those who are timid, take care of those who are weak, be patient with everyone. See that no one pays back evil for evil but always try to do good to each other and to all people. Always be joyful. Never stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. Do not stifle the Holy Spirit. Do not scoff at prophecies, but test everything that is said. Hold on to what is good and stay away from every kind of evil. It's the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God this morning. Now, I have to admit that every time I read verse 19 from the New Living Translation, I almost laugh out loud. Uh, Verse 19 says it a little different than what we're used to. It says, do not stifle the Holy Spirit. Now, I'm old enough to remember the TV show All in the Family with Archie Bunker and his wife, Edith. And every time that Edith would say something that Archie didn't want to hear, he would look at her and say in his strong New York accent, stifle it, Edith. And I think that's the first time I ever heard the word stifle. Again, here in the New Living Translation of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19, it says, do not stifle the Holy Spirit. You know, we're probably more used to getting to that translations that say do not quench the Holy Spirit, but I really think that I like the word stifle better here. What does stifle mean? Well, we think that it might mean shut up, Right? I mean, that's what, you know, it seems like Archie was telling Edith, shut up, Edith. But what stifle actually means is to suffocate, to smother, to cut off, to kill by depriving of oxygen. So it's more than just shut your mouth, right? It's suffocate that, smother it, cut it off, kill it by depriving it of oxygen. So what is one of the things that we we suffocate or, or smother? Well, the first thing that always comes to mind with me is fire. You know, fire can be smothered. It can be quenched. Um, Living here next to the Red River Gorge, we hear campers and hikers all the time being reminded over and over again to, to be sure that their campfires are completely smothered, to be sure that they're completely put out so they don't cause a wildfire down in the gorge. And we've had a few of those. John the Baptist's words about Jesus were this. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit how? And with fire. We know that in Acts chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came upon those who were praying in the upper room with a mighty rushing wind and tongues of fire. These tongues of fire rested on their heads and, and a fire was kindled in their hearts and in their souls. 
And, and it was out of that blaze that the fire began to, to spread throughout the, the whole known world and, and the Christian church was born. You see, a fire comes from a person's soul whenever that, whenever that believer is filled with the Holy Spirit. And, and from that fire, there's a passion, passionate burning to know Christ and to share in his good news. And an ignited Christian with the ignited fire of the Holy Spirit is a great force in spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. However, as we see in our scripture this morning, it's possible for that fire to be stifled, to be quenched and smothered and extinguished. The Apostle Paul tells us that it's, it's possible to, to douse out that fire that burns within us, to smother that raging flame that once burned brightly in our souls until all that remains is a, is a blackened cold cinder. Where there was once warm, warmth and light, there's now only coldness and death in a Christian's life. Well, how does that happen? Paul doesn't really tell us here. He, he simply commands us, don't do it. But we have some pretty clear clues if you think about it. First of all, we're the ones who do it, not somebody else. I couldn't tell you the number of times as a pastor when, when I've had people come up to me and say, you know what so-and-so said or what so-and-so did during church this morning really quenched the spirit for me. And, and I would usually reply to them, no, you're focusing on what so-and-so said or what so-and-so did. That's what quenched your spirit. You took your eyes and your heart off the Holy Spirit of God. You took your eyes and your heart off of worship. See, nobody else can quench the Spirit for you. If you keep your eyes and your ears and your mind and your heart tuned to the Lord, nobody else can quench the Spirit. Paul says, don't quench the Spirit. Don't stifle the Holy Spirit. Who's he talking to? You, me, as individuals. We're the ones who do it. Secondly, the fire is stifled when water is poured on it, right? Our sin is the water in our lives that grieves the Holy Spirit and smothers that Spirit's flame. Our sin kills the, the flame of the Spirit within us by depriving it of oxygen. Now, what is that oxygen? It's the righteousness of God needed to keep it burning. So when we sin, we're throwing water on that, that flame of the Holy Spirit. We're, we're smothering it out. We're depriving it of what it needs, which is the righteousness, the praise, the worship of God to keep it burning. So how is the Holy Spirit within you this morning? Is he burning brightly within you? Or is he being choked out by sin? Or maybe by the fact that you're taking your eyes off of Christ and, and off of his word. Friends, don't let that fire within you be stifled. Don't let it be smothered. Don't deprive it of the righteousness of God needed to keep it burning. Go to God in repentance and, and ask him to once again kindle that flame until it burns white hot within you because then you're going to enjoy the love and the peace and the joy and the mercy and, and all the benefits, all the blessings, the windows of heaven will open and, and pour down blessings upon you and you're going to be a mighty force against the devil. You're going to be a mighty force for your church. You're going to be a mighty force for your community. You're going to be a mighty force for those who are lost and those are in need. You're going to be working for them. You're going to be spreading that light because as that fire grows within you, that light of the, and that light of the love of Christ shows around about you and, and affects those who are near you, those who you come into contact with. So don't quench, don't stifle the Holy Spirit. It's up to you. Thanks be to God. Thank you for being with me this morning. And I pray that you'll be filled with God's Holy Spirit today and you'll allow that Holy Spirit to continue to burn within you with an everlasting fire. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Again, thank you for being with me. Have a wonderful day. God loves you. I love you. We'll see you tomorrow. We'll talk once again about the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Bye-bye, everyone.